on a farmland near you not too long ago. Farmers used organic farming methods to grow food. They rotated their crops. They stored, traded, and shared choice seed from one season to the next. They did not face lawsuits and harassment because seeds weren't patented like some drug formula. Then came the greedy and power hungry. Genetic engineering took over. The technology promised increased crop yields, lower cost for farmers, and reduced use of herbicides. The result? Natural farming practices were shunned in favor of a completely synthetic system of chemicals, irrigation systems, GMOs, petrochemical-derived fertilizers, and other additions to the soil. Today, GMOs are highly pervasive. 94% of all soy grown in the U.S., as well as about 88% of corn, is genetically engineered in one way or another. With no mandatory GMO labeling in place, you are virtually guaranteed that your child is munching on a snack with GMO ingredients right now. And there are key groups and individuals that protect these GMO interests. The Grocery Manufacturers Association, or GMA, claims to be the voice of more than 300 businesses in the consumer packed goods industry and closely related fields. But it is nothing more than a front for huge junk food manufacturers and pesticide producers that have so much at stake in the GMO trade. The GMA is funding efforts in 25 states to defeat labeling measures. Meet the well-known members of the GMA. These brands and a long list of GMA members, purveyors of junk eating, disease, and the chemicalization of food, don't want you to know what you're eating. They think the idea of knowledge is crazy, but more and more Americans are not about to sit through another GMO-laced dinner. They have started to assert their right to know. <laughs> In 2011, consumers, scientists, and organic food companies in California 
worked together to put Prop 37, also known as the California Right to Know Genetically Engineered Food Act, on the November 6, 2012 ballot. Who else will vote down this grassroots initiative but these guys? They worked so hard amassing $46 million spent on flyers and media advertisements to defeat Prop 37 and your basic right to know. Until backlash ensued because it didn't take much for consumers to figure out who were funding the anti-GMO labeling campaigns. Prop 37 also paved the way for other state labeling initiatives. Connecticut, Maine, and 20 other states have passed GMO labeling bills that are currently pending legislation. Then came Initiative 522, or the People's Right to Know Genetically Engineered Food Act in Washington. On November 5, 2013, I-522 narrowly lost 49 to 51 percent in favor of no labeling. The usual suspects poured staggering amounts of money into the state labeling initiative. The anti-labeling camp raised $22 million, half of which came from the GMA. And the GMA figured out the perfect way to avoid the backlash this time, by breaking the law. The who's who in America's food and biotech business channeled millions of dollars through a so-called defensive brand strategic account set up by the GMA to avoid consumer backlash. Donations were laundered through that account. It was a supposedly foolproof strategy. No identification. No footprints. The ringleader is no less than Grocery Manufacturers Association CEO Pamela Bailey, who recommended the fund creation to better shield individual companies from attack. Pam Bailey made it clear in 2012 that defeating Prop 37 was the single highest priority for the GMA. She says that there has never been a single credible scientific study showing GMOs to have harmful effects on humans, animals, or our environment despite overwhelming credible evidence to the contrary. And she considers a 50-state patchwork of GMO labeling laws to be confusing and costly to customers. She forgot to say, bad for their business. And did the brand defense account work? No. Attorney General Bob Ferguson didn't find the sneaky actions amusing. On October 16, 2013, he filed suit against the GMA on behalf of the state of Washington, alleging its violation of the state's campaign disclosure laws. But instead of backing down, the GMA countersued the Attorney General and the state, claiming that the campaign finance disclosure laws were unconstitutional and asserting its right to hide corporate campaign funds, a move that may threaten the state election's transparency. When the news emerges, it is time to join a large, growing group in a massive boycott of some of America's biggest, most ubiquitous brands. With GMO labeling and other key initiatives to strip GMO dangers naked, junk food manufacturers and pesticide producers are seeing the end of their game now and will rescue what they can by any means possible. This involves not just funding all anti-labeling initiatives, but also trying to significantly dilute the value of any GMO label that will be enacted into law in the future. It is clear that the GMA does not have your best interests at heart. Junk food manufacturers and pesticide producers will not respond to your demand for disclosure and transparency. They should not get away this time. Boycott the GMA. Boycott their member companies. Boycott their products. Vote with your wallet at every meal. Ignore junk and processed foods and patronize only natural, organic, locally grown foods. Spread the word to help put a stop on yet another wide-scale deception in America.